hope you hope to read the news that s there are some good news, but uh, of course the, the more time it goes, the, the less likely it is. And it's just tragic for the for the boy and the family, of course, and then everyone involved and uh, associated with. It's just one of those things that you don't think is going to happen uh, in 2019. Okay. So let we just keep on hoping and praying that th there will be some good news. Yeah, I said suddenly talking about football seems a little bit odd, but we've got to do that. So yeah. we're here to do. Um, yeah. Last week we talked about contract matters. We talked about Scott McTominay, and you've given him a new yeah. deal. I just wonder if you made any more progress with the likes of De Gea, Martial, Mata, and. We're, I think the club's making progress, yeah, uh, but um, I leave that to the to the to the right people to do that. So it's not. Uh, uh, I don't really know how far uh, we are so um, away from it, but hopefully we can uh, have some good news uh, in the coming weeks. Um, there was a suggestion that Arsenal wanted Eric Bailly. Do you know anything about? Uh, I, I'm not surprised if they do, <laughs> to put it that way. And uh, it's, but that's just one of those things that yeah, there's always speculations, and uh, it's not a big surprise. It, uh, Tomorrow you've got a, a big cup game. Yeah. You've got a league game straight after that. Do you, it's not do straight you, after. We've got plenty well, of time. Four days. <laughs> do you, do you prioritise? You uh, don't really have to prioritise when it's uh, or. I've got a big, strong squad anyway, so of course there will be one or two changes. But it's not like you prioritise one ahead of the other. You always prioritise the next game. So now the main priority is tomorrow night, and then we got Saturday, Sunday, Monday, still three days in between, so plenty of time to recover for Burnley. Well, the Arsenal are obviously trying to find their feet after Arsene Wenger leaving the club, and I guess both here and there have realised that it's not easy to replace a long-term manager. No, uh, obviously Arsene uh, and uh, the Gaffer, they're the two uh, longest serving managers in my era and they were fantastic, the two of them, like an institution in their club. And of course it's going to take time, but Unai, I think I've, we, they beat us uh, when he had Sevilla, they beat Molde in the European Cups, so I've I had the pleasure of meeting him before. And I think they've made a very good signing there. He's, he's tactically very good, um, high energy. And you can see the... I don't know what team he's going to play. He's, he's got loads of different tactics to, to come up with against. So I think they've made a very good signing. How would you describe your own experiences of that Manchester United-Arsenal rivalry over the years? Fantastic. That's the, the one fierce rivalry that on a football basis uh, all my years when, when I played it was all, always between the two of us they were the closest rivals they win the double, we win the treble the, they win the next year and the games against them were just fantastic You know, with a, we had a great team but they had a very good team as well with, uh, with a famous back four David Seaman who was I think I scored once against David I think that was just once, but uh, uh, with the mid, you know, the French connection they had uh, with Andre Vieira, uh, Pires, Petit. It was just uh, great games you were looking forward to. And but I met them a couple of times in the FA Cup uh, as well. So uh, hopefully, I think I've got a better statistics. I think I won two, two semi-finals. We beat the, uh, beat them, and but I think we lost two two nil at home once a year when uh, there were some t uh, tackles flying in between the two teams. So, fantastic games. Oli, with the Arsenal kind of rivalry you talk about and the, the Cups being kind of standout, you, everyone remembers 99. Yeah. You played in that game, Ryan Giggs gets the goal and all the yeah. rest of it. But it's actually 20 years to the day since you scored at Anfield to knock Liverpool out on that yeah. run. So it started it? you on that okay. run. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of your actual personal highlights, you got a couple of winners' medals. I mean, yeah. would that be a standout moment or is it those Arsenal battles in this competition? I think the semi-final 99 is it's such an important game. And when Peter saves that penalty from uh, Dennis Bergkamp, that, that makes or that gives us the... the the advantage and will win the treble. If Burkamp had scored, they would have won the double. That's just how small the margins are, and I think maybe that's the standout for me. I was substituted, and so I watched Giggs' goal from the sideline, and what a goal that was! 
So uh, I think that's the one highlight in the FA Cup. Apart from, of course, walking out on on the pitch at Wembley in '99, that that was a proud moment for me because growing up in Norway, it's always the last game you look forward to. It was always broadcast live on telly, and it was a big. Uh, I still remember Norman Whiteside's the left-footed curler one when uh, after Kevin Moran was sent off. So uh, that was the one game that we. Knew we were going to watch. Um, obviously, you've still contracted to Mulder and you're, you're set to return in the summer. They've made signings, they've sold players, they've played their first friendly. How do you keep on top of things? Do you, are you hands on still there? I mean, how, how does that work? Because obviously, you've got a the, huge task here. Obviously, the plan is uh, to go back there, uh, but uh, it's one of them things that. That leave that aside. Yeah, I watched uh, parts of the CSK Moscow game and they lost 2 1 in the first friendly. But my job now is to improve the team here, take one game at a time, just to help the team and work with the players here. So that's not very difficult to because there's 24 hours a, a day. So you, you can spend 10 15 minutes talking to uh, to them back home. How's the squad looking? Because obviously Shaw came out injured. Oh, yeah, he, he was ill. He just fell ill the uh, night before, but he, he tried to do the warm up. Um, Smalling started training again, so it's it's only um, it's Rojo and Fellaini now are the two uh, that I can't uh, call upon in in this game. Class of '92 spoke very kindly and supportively about yesterday. Uh, Paul Scholes is thinking about coming to management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. So. Uh, you, it's easier to speak loudly when you're not uh, in a in a job yourself. So that'll be that'll be great if Scholes gets a job. I think he's, I think he's, someone that you'd want to learn from. Uh, and well, they're my not my mates, but uh, I've played with them so many uh, so many years. So of course we, I'm just doing my bit to, how I feel I could help the.